Yep, that's right, we're back again, guys, with another Shark Scientist Reacts to Shark Attack videos for you all. And boy, have we got some wild ones today. Coming up a little bit later on, we've got this ridiculously dangerous encounter with a grey reef shark that bites a deep sea scuba diver, a white shark that ended up biting a surfer in Australia, and we, of course, will be discussing that completely bonkers incident that happened about a week ago in the Maldives, where a tiger shark chomped down on a hapless scuba diver's head. We've got all of those and more, so make sure you guys stick around. So it's almost a year since I've last done one of these Shark Scientist Reacts to Shark Attack videos, and I know you guys enjoy and appreciate them. Slight side note, if you do enjoy these videos, guys, please do hit that like button, and I'd love it if you could subscribe to the channel as well. Just quickly before we start, I want to give you guys the reminder that I give you every time before one of these videos, and that is, even though we're going to see a lot of gnarly incidents today, shark attacks are still exceptionally rare. It's taken me about a year to collate some of these, and there's only two of them that are recent, so you can see that they really don't don't happen that often. But by doing these videos, I'm hoping to give you guys a bit of an understanding as to how and why some of these incidents happen, and importantly, talk you through how you can avoid ending up in the same situation yourself. Right, okay, no more intros, let's jump in. So first up here, we're with a spearfisher in Australia. Spearfisher. Oh man, I think you guys know where these ones usually end up. Pretty quickly then we can see he dives down right towards a charged up bull shark who's swimming around kind of erratically and he gives that shark a poke with the spear gun and it reacts very, very badly to that poke and bites him on the leg. Ouch. Now, normally in these situations with spearfishers and sharks, there's usually a common theme that seems to run throughout all of them, and that is the presence of a dead or injured fish within that vicinity. It's what usually attracts the sharks over in the first place. On first watch, a lot of people would be forgiven for thinking here that there's no fish, and this shark is just swimming around erratically or aggressively, and the spearfisher was maybe just trying to defend himself. But if we pause it just a couple of seconds in here, we can see the injured fish just there in the top right-hand corner of the screen. It's only for a few seconds, Seconds, but I think the movements of the shark just after as well kind of give it away that that shark is chowing down on some kind of smaller prey item. In reality, what I think has happened here is the spearfish has initially headed down and speared that fish, but not managed to keep it on the line. And he's gone up to the surface for a breath of air and then come back down and spotted the bull shark going for his catch. And instead of conceding to the notoriously aggressive marine predator who's evolved perfectly over millions and millions of years to hunt in the sea, he's decided to try and regain his catch. Of course, then we've got a territoriality or resource guarding bite here, then it's a pretty standard reaction from a bold shark species. If you're trying to get between a shark and its prey, they can and will defend that food aggressively. Personally, I think the poke from that spear gun was just the last straw for that shark and it's flipped out, but he has absolutely provoked this bite. It could have been so dangerous as well. Like he's taken a nasty one to the leg there and that could have easily severed an artery. I just wanted to do another quick pause here though for you though, as it's a beautiful demonstration of the pectoral fin positioning of a shark that's really pissed off. Look at how this shark is pointing those fins downwards. It's so obvious. I mean, at this point, it's probably a little bit too late to be able to react to that, but sharks will often do this behavior before they decide to bite. And if they are doing that behavior, it's time to get the hell out of there. Okay, up next then, we've got this super short clip from Australia of surfer Kai McKenzie. The clip itself is really short and is paused just before the bite, but it's still pretty horrifying. I'm fairly sure the full clip was filmed on a police officer's phone from a New South Wales police station who had the original footage and then it was somehow leaked from that police station, which is bad. And this particular shark here is definitely a white shark. It's probably around three and a half meters or so. And it ended up biting Kai while he was on his board and severed his leg in the process. You can just see the massive amount of damage to his board here. It's just completely splintered it. Somehow though, Kai decided despite his massive injuries, actually managed to paddle back to shore where someone helped create a makeshift tourniquet out of a dog lead to try and help stem the bleeding. Kai's leg actually ended up washing ashore not too long after the incident, where it was placed on ice by some bystanders who came across it and taken to the hospital, but the doctors sadly couldn't reattach it. The footage itself here though is absolutely wild. If we break it down, we can see right from the get-go though that Kai is panicked. He's likely already seen the shark by this point and is just desperately trying to get out of there. He's got his legs up out of the water as well. And I think that just tells us he knew that a white shark was in the area. Maybe it's already bumped him, but it could be the case here that this frenzied paddling actually hasn't helped Kai out at all here. And it might have actually ended up causing the shark to really come in at full force. I think this one has the markings of an exploratory bite though, because one, that shark didn't come back and two, 
Kai's leg actually wasn't consumed by the shark because it ended up washing ashore. Thankfully, he managed to survive that incident and was in good spirits based on a social media post that he put up, despite that awful reality of losing his leg. He even said that he was going to be back in the water in no time. Good luck. Okay, heading a little bit back in time now to 2004, and we're off to Cuba. Despite this looking like it was filmed on a potato, we can just about see that this is some kind of tourist shark feeding dive experience. And the sharks in question look like bull sharks. Hand feeding and bull sharks shouldn't really be in the same sentence, to be honest, but here we are. Anyway, we can see the provisioning diver here in the foreground, luring a bull shark over with a piece of fish, and just as he's moving the shark a little bit higher, he releases that fish, but unfortunately, it looks like the shark has mistimed that bite there and been distracted by his retracting arm, and it just latches down onto that instead. After a few shakes of its head, the shark realizes it doesn't quite fancy it and swims off. You can see, though, the severe damage that shark has done to that diver's arm here. It's absolutely pouring with blood out into the water. That is gnarly. Fortunately, he manages to make it to the surface, and from reading around the incident, he spent months and months in hospital recovering from this. I think, to be honest, even he would realize what he's doing here is pretty silly. To be trying to hand feed any shark is a bad move, let alone a bull shark. One wrong move and that's it. You're going to cop a bite. He's just lucky that shark didn't stay attached for a little bit longer because that could be your arm gone. I think this one here then is a definite mistake bite though. That shark is initially going for the fish and then as he's let the fish go and quickly pulled his arm in, the shark's seen that fast movement and just clamped down, thinking the arm is a food item. It's let go almost straight away. So yeah, definite mistake bite here that's just been mistimed from the shark and missed time from that diver. Don't be feeding sharks, guys. It's just a bad move all round. Okay, then up next, we're going to have a look at that Maldives incident that happened literally just a couple of weeks ago. And this one is a real eye-opener. The clip itself here is super short, so we're just going to play on repeat. But really quickly here, we can see a female scuba diver in the foreground not really paying attention to her surroundings when a massive tiger shark just clamps down on her head. That shark has got to be at least four meters long there. It's an absolute unit. You can just see the size of it in comparison to the scuba diver. So after biting down on her head, the shark realizes very quickly that it's not interested at all, spits her back out and swims off. I can't believe how wild this situation is here though. If that shark just decides to bite a little bit harder or for a little bit longer, that diver's head is bitten clean off. Somehow she's managed to come away from it though with only superficial injuries to the back of her head. I think I read somewhere she still needed about 40 stitches to patch herself up though. Right, okay, so what's gone on here then? Well, first up, this is clearly a dive site that is set up for tourists to dive with tiger sharks. But from what I hear, it didn't happen in Fuvmala, which is one of the major tiger shark diving hotspots in the Maldives. This particular incident actually wasn't too far away from Mali, which is the capital. There's some anecdotal evidence that this particular scuba diver was brought in with a group of people on a speedboat from a different part of the Maldives. So apparently they weren't even with a local reputable dive company. They were just sped in, chucked in the water and given no real safe guidance, which is just insane. You can see from the video though that the scuba diver in question is not really paying attention to her surroundings and she's distracted by something in her hands. Pretty sure it's a GoPro and she's just looking at pictures. But that's her first big mistake, not being 100% alert of everything that's going on in your surroundings. It's really easy to take your eye off the ball for just a second, but when you're in the water with large predatory sharks like tigers, you just can't do that. We can see she's also horizontal in the water instead of being vertically positioned and that's also gonna increase your chances of getting bitten. When you're flailing around horizontally, you're just making yourself look like a prey item. Whereas if you're vertical and alert in the water column, you immediately make your profile just look that much bigger. And that can be enough to deter a shark from coming in closer to check you out. Another thing I've heard as well, although we can't quite see it from the footage, is that she was wearing a high contrasting dive mask strap or a hood. It's possibly a lighter color, maybe yellow or orange. Now we of course can't tell that from the footage that we got, but those are the reports that are coming out of Mali and the dive operators in the area. And if she was wearing that high contrasting color, that could have been enticing enough for the tiger shark to come over for that exploratory test bite. Yellows and oranges will always contrast against the blue of the surrounding waters. So if you're going to be in the water with large predatory sharks like tiger sharks, you need to cover that up. It's just a catalog of errors here from the scuba diver herself and the people who decided to take her and her group to that particular dive site. Just watching it again here, we're really lucky that we're not talking about a fatality here based on the size of that particular tiger shark. So then from a behavioral perspective, this is a classic exploration bite here. It's come in, seen something that it thought might have been food, had a chomp and then spat it back out and swum off. Bony skulls don't generally taste particularly good for sharks. So yeah, this one was just exploring a potential food item 
them here and had a go. Just another big reminder here though for you guys that if you're ever going to head out and scuba dive with large sharks in this part of the world or other parts of the world, please make sure you do your research and choose the best local dive operators who know what they're doing. Because if you don't, you could end up in the business end of a shark like this lady here and that's a situation you don't want to be in. Tiger sharks, man, you don't want to mess around with those sharks. That incident kind of reminds me of the Fiji one though, where a tiger shark basically did exactly the same thing to a scuba diver. And if you wanted to check that particular incident out, I analyze it alongside others in this video right here. Please do give this video a like if you enjoyed it though, guys, but make sure you click this one here to check out that Fiji shark incident. There's also some other unbelievable shark attack incidents in there. So if you don't want to miss out on those, make sure you give it a watch.